constantly feel like Kobe I'm like Jokic with the rock You physically couldn't hold me I don't care if you push it 40 You can never let a bro me You don't step like Ginobili From young OG to the OG From nosebleeds to floor seats Circle stronger than Cuban links My gold dad should go play it You verse me, got that to reach Hey, hey, what's up, everybody? This is the One and One Sports Show. Appreciate y'all for joining us. How's it going, fellas? Hey, man. goes good. Goes good. How good, man? What's up? How y'all doing? All right. It's Wednesday. Uh, I see you have the proper. Uh, you have the proper framing. You see the the Seven B Network on the bottom here with the with the bearded yeah. bearded brothers up top with the caps on. So yeah, they, we we rock we rock our boldness pride. We don't you know them Texas boys. You know yes, you know they ain't, they, ain't, they ain't gonna give up no leverage. Yes, they sir. Won't. So I'll be waiting to see what background you're going to have every week. Last time somebody said that, it looked like you was going through the pretty game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm just now trying you, to change. Now you're on the blacktop. That's it. Yeah, the blacktop. Yes, sir. <laughs> All right, so I figure, oh, my light done turned off. I figure um, Mr. B- Mr. Bennett, once yes, again. Sir. You rolling. We start, we starting off with your squad. You got, they appear you to be making minutes. some uh some big moves, so I just filled everybody in with the uh Pittsburgh Steelers. I know we was talking about we was talking about Justin Fields for the longest of you know, where the Bears gonna keep him, if they trade it, who's what team he's gonna go to. And then also on the other side what will the team have to give up to get Justin Fields? Okay. And we, we over here looking like, I don't think many of us were expecting the first round pick. We, we, we was looking at that a second. No later than the third, but at least a second. And we always, we, we always wrong on that one. They, they, they said him down there, he was, he was down there on the street corner when Pittsburgh picked him up. Right. Well, six round pick and then have a chance. <laughs> a, a to conditional go six round, round yeah. in 25. It'll go to a fourth round if he plays fifty percent of the snaps next year. So right now, it's basically it's a sixth round pick we gave him up for. Yeah, it, that's. I mean, hats off to to the general. To, what she said, the name of the general manager was uh, Mr. Bennett. Omar Khan, the con, or AKA Omar. the con artist. They call him. Con, yeah. the con <laughs> I like that because he he's willing and dealing, and it's one of those deals where I saw a Bears fan was upset. Not so much that okay, you can understand. You know, it's been it's been basically signaled that they were gonna take uh Trey Fields and get him. But for you to, you know, statements like, hey, we want to do right by him, there were other offers on the table. It clearly shows look, if it if it was true that he said he wanted to go to the Steelers, he wanted to go to a stable situation. Yeah. And my thing is, you know, at this point, you can see that there has been a decline of Russell Wilson. We feel like, and, and obviously the Steelers do as well, he can win this year, but you always need a backup quarterback. Kenny right. Pickett was right there and, and pouted, and so he got he had to go. So it's like now you get a stable organization, a good head coach, and now if he plays the seventeen games or the bulk of the season, Justin Fields can just sit back, work with Arthur Smith, and kind of you know learn the offense, get get with it. You know the Steelers are gonna have weapons. You know they got fire moves. They got you know they got picking you know pickings. You know I I like the moves. I, matter of fact, I'll be I'll be honest with you. I'm jealous because it's like dang. What is what does it look like to have a front office making moves? You know, right, right. You know, my, you know. So, but I, I say hats off to them. You know, because you, you're supposed to get better in all three phases. They made trades, they made free agent signings, and the draft is, you know, about a month or so away. So, right. I say hats off to the Steelers, man. I mean, they rival and everything like that, but you got to give credit where it's due. You know. Yeah, yeah. Now it's been a, it's been an exciting time, and the fact that they're taking, you know, guys are willing to come there. I, th- I think, and I think that's partly. I think that's the Tomlin effect. You know, the fact you got Patrick Queen, who could have easily got 18, 19, 20 million dollars per on the market. We saw them for a three year, 14.2 billion per uh, a year. You know, so that was an environment. And then he brought his boy in from Miami, the the DB. He brought him in on top of that. You know, who's a who's a guy we need because we want to need someone in strong safety so he can stay. He can play inside. He can play safety position. That will make uh, make it for Patrick to get back to being a a, a roamer so he could be a, a be a um, more of a, a ball hawk, so that that kind of dominoed in, 
And then you figure with Russell going there. And, and again, I think the environment for Fields, I think you know, he's coming in knowing that he's probably going to be the backup for this year. So it's not going to be any any kind of uh, you know major controversy. Now, if he balls in the offseason or whatever before even, you know, before the season starts, that's another story. But he's not coming in expected to be the starter. And uh, so, so yeah, so I think, you know, just that environment that they've created is, 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 is such where, you know, they're definitely looking to do some big things over the next couple of years. I mean, I love um, the press conference of Russell Wilson where basically all the main DBs, they had dinner. That, 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 they, they got on a – it was supposed to be a 15-minute conference call, turned into a nearly two-hour conference call, and they had dinner with those guys, Cam Hayward, his brother, Minka Fitzpatrick, all those guys that night. So they were already, open, you know, kind of welcoming him with open arms. And uh, so already it's, it's definitely it's a breath of fresh air compared to, you know, his last couple of years in Denver. So, so I think that the climate that they're creating is, 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 is really something that's really drawing players. And let's not forget, even with the Kenny Pickett trade, they even made out because they actually they swapped their third round pick. They had the 120th pick in the third round. They moved yeah. up to 98. So they actually they improved their draft stock by getting a, an earlier uh, a third round uh, pick with that. And now they're actually shopping. To see, that, I know Ayuk from San Francisco. He's being mentioned as a possible landing spot uh, uh, for them. So imagine Ayuk and and um, uh, uh, George Pinkins at, at wide receiver. I mean, you know, I mean they're they they're, they're, they're making some boss moves, but you can do that when you brought in two starting quarterbacks for four point six two million dollars. So I mean, let's think about that. Russ is one point two, and then and then. Uh, um, uh, you know, Fields is I think three point six million dollars uh, for this year, and then they can you know kick this down the road and visit next year. So that's so that's allowing them to have the extra money to play around. But again, Tomlin again, because Tomlin is a guy he's taking chances on sort of retreads in the past. Where remember this is the guy he brought Michael Vick in, who when a lot of people weren't even trying to feel Vick at the time, you know, brought him into uh, uh, Pittsburgh. So you know you got that Russell Williams Russell's from the VA. So, you know, Mike, you know, has got a lot of love for, for, for Virginia area, so brought him in and, and uh, whatnot. So I think, you know, Omar's done his work, but I think the fact that knowing that Tomlin's there, Ayuk is already talking. I didn't even know, I didn't even recognize that they say Ayuk looks a lot like Mike Tomlin. Like they're almost, if you put a picture of Mike Tomlin and Ayuk together, they're almost like twins. So he's putting overtures out already out there that he wants to go to Pittsburgh, you know, so he's already um, – making that move, and if he's willing to come to us for, you know, because he can command, you know, probably, again, uh, easily 15, if not 20 on the open market. If we can get him in on a reasonable deal, then, you know, that's going to be a, a, a dope receiving core. Your running game's there, so when you go into the draft, you could focus on, again, the needs. They need a center, and they need a right tackle. So they can, you know, so that first two or three uh, draft picks, they can focus on where they need to. Otherwise, if you know, uh, if they don't get another receiver in, then they may have to go with the number one pick at wide receiver, or if, or possibly a second round at wide receiver. So, so they're trying to see if they can get the IU deal um, uh, done as well. So, so yeah, so you can make these kind of moves when you're not paying your starting quarterback forty fifth million dollars. And I'm surprised uh, IU is looking at them though. I mean, I don't know if he's trying to look at like the grass is green on other sides. I'm like, dude, you already um, on a perennial winner right now he, good, or he's he, he is but i think i think if anything if he's looking to go somewhere he may have heard that you outplay your salary slot that they had slotted for you because i know teams will do that whatever think hey this guy's gonna cost this much and everybody plans out the salary cap and with them it's either that or they have to get rid of somebody else they have to get rid of uh you know Debo samuel you know, so because I mean, he is the I use the best receiver on the team. Debo is the best what the best weapon on it. Well, between him and McCaffrey, you know, mm -hmm. so he's one of the best weapons on the team. But as far as pure receiving, Ayuk is better. So I, if I was there, I would I would keep if I was you know John Lynch. I would keep Ayuk versus I would keep you know Sam right. Plus, well, yeah. Plus Debo, he ha he's had an injury history. So you know, yeah. I mean, he, you know, he's he's a physical he's a physical player. So you just don't know how much longer he's going to be able to hold up. Uh, over uh, you know over that course of time, so that that's something to be considered. I know uh, KP, shout out to KP from KC Five. Uh, yeah, definitely. I think the Steelers. I think they'll grab one, but they don't have to invest the first and second round. If they can get like an IU, they don't have to invest the first or second yeah. rounder, which is what they which they're, they're kind of looking at. They can go for like a third, fourth round, get a slot receiver, and and uh, you know uh, bring him in. But but if you got you know if you bring him in, you're you're basically a lock on the edges. And then it's that you know finding the route runner to to be on the um 
uh, to be on the inside. But that's that's the thing. I, I have no doubt that they're going to select uh, most likely a receiver in the third or fourth. But that what, conversation what, can change, though. What What is Pittsburgh's first round pick? What number? Twentieth. Twentieth. They can find a good receiver within that round because there's a lot of good receivers. And that's it. I but the thing is, but their receiver. immediate need is they have no center. Well, that's, they gotta no. get a lineman for number one pick. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> but a center first, can come in the second first round. Need they is a center. It, it is a it is a it is actually a good center. They say it's a good it's a good offensive line. There's three, right, right. There's three right. There's three legit uh, top quality centers uh, that can go uh, either a uh, late first round, early second. Uh, oh, Jackson uh, Powers Johnson is like the the number one. You got this guy Mims, I think from um, from Georgia, and you got this other guy from uh, West Virginia that they're also uh, scouting. But then also again left, ta- you know, the tackle because they want to move uh, um, Broderick Jones. Uh, he played right tackle this year, but he was drafted to be a left tackle, so they want to move him over and bring a right tackle in. So again, so they're also looking at uh, those guys also. So definitely they want to fortify the lines. And especially with this Arthur Smith offense, they would be able to run the ball also. So, you know, they definitely want to lock, you know, uh, uh, again, you know, feed that line, do it like the Cowboys used to do it back in the day. You know, get those hogs <laughs> going. So. I, 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 just wanted, I just wanted to say this. I know and it's, the, the Steelers didn't use this mantra, but they look like a team that's more all in <laughs> than the Cowboys because the way last season ended for them, yeah, they made the playoffs, but they they offense was was miserable, and they not they didn't want to stay in that. You know, just roam that status quo. They, they you know we, we got to change this. This is not working, so they did something about it. And as a fan base, once you see your franchise actually, they're not going to sit in me- mediocrity. Just you know, just dwell in that. They gonna do something they about goes, it. Then the, they bring the quarterbacks and stuff like that. Make the you know sign the free agents. Um, you don't always have to go get a big name free agent, but get players that you know that could potentially make an impact on your team. And I see them doing that, but the Cowboys, they losing more players than the guy coming in. But, Shani, that's the dynamic of the Pittsburgh Steelers since they've been in the NFL. They've always made the moves to make them a better team. It wasn't about the Eagles. Do, back, the, I, I respect that about the Eagles. They do that same but, thing. But too. Pittsburgh's been doing it since they've been in the. They've always seemed to be relevant every year. You can never. You you can go back even when they had their worst seasons. They still find a fucking way to make the playoffs by the hair they skin. Yes. And it's not that they had a bad team. They just had probably some key injuries at the wrong time. Yeah. And if you look over the last 16, 17 years, that says a lot about who the head coach is. And right. the GM because they will make that move. And that's why I, I give a shout out to Pittsburgh even now, because now, and y'all can do your research, when was the last time a team bought on two black starting quarterbacks yeah. at the same time? I that's thought I would get to you before you did. <laughs> that's history. And well, I, think, I, think currently, I think currently that the Browns, I think, have – do they have four black quarterbacks on their roster? They got four. They got four. They got they got the kids that they drafted they from UCLA. Star. They one have, star. I mean, obviously Deshaun Watson, and I want to say James. They got Jameis Winston, but they just signed. Yeah, they just signed. James. And I want to say, and they they got Tyler Huntley from uh yeah. the Ravens. Yeah. And so, oh, you know, they covered they covered themselves Shout because, like I, like I said last Jesus. week, they covered themselves. Hey man, you know you got it. You got a black starter. The fastest way to get a mutiny have a white backup. They said, man, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna quadruple down, triple down on it. We're gonna get right. three black ups that are black, and we're gonna figure out who's whose skill set is gonna work. And you know, obviously, one is gonna be the emergency quarterback, and somebody might get cut, somebody might get traded. You know, that's you know, it's good team building. But I, it's just, I want to say they gave. My only thing is, they gave Jerry Judy an extension. Yeah, he's a top receiver. Yeah, he's I haven't seen. I, I, I would say, team. I would say he has been more of a disappointment as far as what was expected. Is him being in the league. It's been a disappointment. I think. I mean, look, look now, now. Now, what I'm gonna say, Trey Burke, name the receiver that was drafted in that in that same draft with him. I mean, we're gonna take Rugs off the board, but we're gonna. I'll tell you, Justin Jefferson was tra- drafted after him. C.D. Lamb was drafted after him. Mm-hmm. Um, so those are, those are just but, two. But two based guys off the body of work for college, though, Judy was that man in college, just based off. So he was. 
And that's what I'm saying. So, he was that man in college and he's been done it at this level. To be honest, the Raiders, I thought the Raiders should have taken him first. I thought in that class at the time, I thought he was the best receiver in that draft. I, I mean, I didn't know Jefferson was going to be this good, you know. I didn't know, you know, I, I had high expectations for Lamb, but I didn't know he was going to be this good. But right. Yeah, man, I, I say. Point spray, they may uh, still get because I'm really high on this guy, Joe Milton the third out of Tennessee. Yeah. Again, I saw yeah. his combine. If you haven't seen his combine tape, yeah. You can't teach 6'5", 250, and he's got an arm. No. Like, you know, he's got a howitzer for an arm. So I'm thinking if, you, if they bring him in, let him sit for a couple years and, 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 and wait this thing out. So, so yeah. So they can have, they may have an all black uh, QB core uh, going into, uh, going into the next. Nice. Week. Yeah. Send out to the Smiths. Nice. I know we I know we got the uh, the topic of what you got on there about Mike McCarthy and Sean Payton, but I want to say, man, like props to props to guys being in the league because the money has gone up. Props to a guy like Aaron Donald, who's an all time great. It's just like, look, my body's banged up. You know, yeah. presuming that he's taken care of, and it's like, look, I'm gonna go ahead and step away from the game. Yeah, smart yeah. move. I mean, he made, he's made a ton of money. You know, he's got his he's got a Super Bowl ring, and uh, he doesn't right. really have a lot to, to prove. He's gonna go in first ballot. Definitely. All. You know, Hall of Famer, All Decade team, certainly from the 2010s. So I mean, he's got he's got every statistical that you think he'd want. Uh, you know, at at his position. And the thing is, he's a tackle. I mean, you talking about you talk about like Joe Green type of status. I mean, everyone wants to be an edge guy and get the sacks and everything. But he's to, to do what he was able to do at the tackle position is at six you know, one at six one two eighty. Yeah, at six one two eighty. I mean, and, and that's, you, you look at. I mean, the guy got abs. Right. <laughs> Two eighty with abs. <laughs> He's a freak why, athlete, man. And that's why I say, you know what? When as soon as I saw it, I was just like, look, he's had a lot of wear and tear on that body. He's got. Mm -hmm. He has to pay so much to take, probably to maintain himself in the off season, and probably, you know, be real, has to put on weight and, and you know, you know, continue to try to gain throughout the season. Yeah. To, and the rigorous and guys, you know, 50, 50 pounds on you, wearing on you during the game, so. You know, I say hats off to one of the greats, and you're definitely in the conversation of you know, hey, where is uh, you know, where does he land as far as he's got to be? I, I mean, who you got? I mean, you got Joe Green. I guess Bob Lilly. He was a tackle, right? I mean, you guys are dad. Yeah, exactly. So Bob Lilly, Joe Green. Uh, who else? Red, Reggie. Reggie, Reggie White. White? Was, Reggie was an edge. Reggie was an oh, edge. Bruce. Uh, put, uh, Bruce Smith was an edge. Even more so. Once that was when an I think end. about when I think of you know he might interior, be in that, he when might I, when be I think about great line. interior guys, I, I yeah. put like the Saps in here. I put I put Donald in that in that kind of class. Yeah, what's going on, Marcus? Appreciate you checking us out, man. Appreciate. But like, you, yeah, that's it's it's man, just just a great career. And like, and it's funny what uh Kyler Murray said. He was just like, man, it's a great career. Please stay retired. <laughs> 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 I was like, yeah, man. <laughs> Salute you, you Black Man. Thank you for uh, for uh, going on platform for us. Appreciate it's, you. Appreciate, appreciate that. So, so I love Sean Payton and Mike McCarthy. What's the difference between them? One yeah, of them so junky and one of them small. That's the only difference. <laughs> so I, I, I was, it was just something I be uh, you know thinking about, especially during the, during the season. And I'm watching and how and hearing about how people talk about even really before the Denver. Before Denver, because now it's, it's it, people have a different um, outlook on Peyton, the way the whole Russell Wilson thing went down. But people always spoke very highly of Sean Peyton, especially, you know, when he retired. Well, I don't even say retired. He just took a break from coaching, went to TV for a little bit. And then Mike, Mike McCarthy when he got originally fired from Green Bay, then he had a little hiatus before coming back to Dallas. And the two, if I should have pulled up there. I got them. You got them? I got the records. Go ahead. I yeah, got go, the records. Go ahead and spill those out between those two coaches. All right. So Sean, Sean Payton, uh, career regular season record of 160 and 97 with a 62% winning percentage and a postseason record of 9 and 8. Obviously, you know, the one Super Bowl ring. Uh, I see Mike McCarthy here as a career a career record of 167 and 102 and two ties. And uh, I'm trying to get his uh, his career career playoff records pulled up. But it's just like when you think about it, they are extremely similar. And Trey Ferg, you said one one slim, one's heavier. I'll give you another mm -hmm. one. One 
had a all-time great quarterback that wasn't an a-hole. The other one did. And that has a lot to do with his perception. Also, I will say this. As far as the Saints and winning that Super Bowl, I know he holds a special place, you know, in the heart of Saints fans. And, you know, led them through everything that happened with Katrina. So I know he ha- he has that stronghold with them. You know, he had to go in where they had those 16 role games. Mm-hmm. You know, he he so he is in a different place as far as where PR would go. Whereas right. Mike, you know, he's in Green Bay, heavy pressure situation, not a big media market, but a heavily covered team and a heavily noticed team. And when you have Aaron Rodgers, who's always in the headlines, and you have to eat what is the end of far. So it's like he had some like some stickier quarterback situations. Yeah. And you know, he you know, he came out, he came out looking, you know, he won with them, but he was, you know, both of them, are, I'll say this, both of them are stubborn. Both of them are really stubborn, and we're seeing that in their second stops where it's stuff mm-hmm. that they're like, hey, you need to do this. They'll do it for a little so, bit, and then they'll switch. Well, so can I ask you a question? I'm sorry. Oh, you got it. Now, the question is, what makes them so great winning one Super Bowl as a coach? I mean, that's my thing. What, what well, makes the coach great if he won one Super Bowl? Yeah, well, I look at it like this. Because you compare it to a coach like Andy Reid, Andy Reid couldn't win one until he finally got with Mahomes. So the, it's a lot of media put a lot of you know pressure one night on the head coach to win a title. Uh, they still talk about well, Tomlin has won, and they still kind of yeah. look at that like he he needs to get one more. But and he's yeah. been to another one. Those other coaches, have yeah, been it's, to. it just depends on. It really, uh, like when Andy Reid got his, it was really celebrated because he was such a, you know, a head coach so long. He got close, but when he, he was finally broke seven. through, yeah, he finally broke through. They, it was really celebrated. Um, Sean Payton and Mike McCarthy, I don't, I don't can't recall how long they was in the coaching ranks as a head coach before they finally won their first one. I don't think neither one of them was as long as Andy Reid. But yeah, yeah neither one. It's it's something the media really, I don't, I don't even want to say the media because fan base do it too. They just don't really talk about head coaches as much as do like players. But right. fan base do it too. They just judge everybody off a championship. So when they, you know, coaches is basically strictly judged on winning losses. Right. So, so, so they, they question. One, they, they give them pre- credit. Based off the co- head coaches that have won the Super Bowl over the last, that won one Super Bowl over the last 15 years. Who would y'all say is the best coach? I'm gonna say I'm gonna tell you my pick. Yeah. I would say over the past 15 years, I'd say, say just Tom. One Super Bowl. I'll say Tom. Just one Super Bowl. It's only one coach that really won two Super. Well, uh, he's not in the league with the Giants. That was it. Everybody else only won one. Besides, you know, with Brady. Wait, that was 20 years ago, right? You talking about so, uh, Coughlin? Yeah, they won two. But uh, 2000, I think 2000, was 2006, 2007, or something. Or, yeah, that was like 2000. Everybody else just won one. So who would y'all say would be the best coach of those teams? And it got how, how far? How far are you going back? This go back 15, 15 years. 20 years. Just go do that. 2006, 2000. The last time you the Giants won the Super Bowl. You probably still have to pick Belichick. The Giants won like 2012, I think. Something like somewhere in there. Okay. I'm talking about the one Super Bowl winning coach. Oh, who would be the best? One oh, one Super Bowl winning coach. There's only one coach that won more than one I Super gotta, Bowl. I have to go look because I can't. Think of off the top of my head. Uh, you know, Tom Tom is high, obviously up there as far as that that list. I would say he's up there, and then uh, the other ones. It's like you said. That's why it's hard for coaches to make the Hall of Fame. It's hard for coaches to make the Hall of Fame because I mean, what, P- Doug Peterson won one, and he got fired. So it's just <laughs> you know he got fired a few years later, and it's just right. like so. I was like, dang, who? Uh, right. I want to say. I'm gonna say by default. I mean, not just default because I know how good of a coach he is. I'm gonna say Tom because yeah, you know. And then, but then you got to look at. I would say this: championships mean a lot, but you got to look at uh, like the, the total body of work and at least getting there. And you got to look at hey, what's your playoff record yeah. or how many times did you at least qualify? Like you know, and that's that's a big thing. And it's like Tomlin having the the way of having a really difficult you know for the for the history of the time he's been there. AC North been really tough. Now the Bengals really coming on and, and they're showing their dominance. So it's just like that's a really tough division. The Browns are trying like hell. So it's like for him to be continuously either come out on top or get a wild card spot. 
I would say, yeah, for well, sure. Peyton, I'm a, I'm, let's give Peyton some credit. I mean, he has more. I mean, again, Steelers haven't won a playoff game since 2016. And Peyton's got a, 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 a three uh, playoff wins since 2016. So, you know, but again, he hasn't been to another Super Bowl. So you can make the only thing, the, 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 the stain, I would say, on Peyton's record. And again, a lot of people don't talk about it. And they just want to blame him on the defense. I think Bounty Gate, which was the, that was the game that actually put them in the Super Bowl. I think Minnesota was poised to win that game. But, you know, yeah. certainly, you know, a bad bounce or whatever, and they were able to kick a field goal to uh, uh, to win to advance to the Super Bowl. But that, that game seemed like it was set up for uh, Favre to go to uh, another one that you hear about the stuff later on. So, again, I don't know how much he knew. I knew they, you know, threw the, the defensive coordinator uh, 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 under the bus. But yeah. uh, does do you guys think that that stains his record at all, the bounty gate? And and therefore not, that Super Bowl win not, because, not, again, had they not won that game, they won I, think, I don't not, know. Not to me. More than the D.C. But well, I want to, uh, because it was more of a defensive thing. Peyton, he just, I mean, you know, you're, the, you're, the, you're the CEO. Yeah, you're the head so, coach, I mean, so it's, it's on your it's watch. It's on you. Yeah, it's on, it's on your watch. It's on you when that happens. My only thing with that is this. I know, I think they were all the fall guys. They were all the patsies for that. Because growing up, hey, man, like, I'm not going to lie. It, the football culture was, hey, take this guy out of the game. Mm -hmm. That was the culture of that time, especially with those guys, because they're, you know, older than me. And so uh, a few, you know, a generation or so ahead. So it's like, yeah, that was the thing. Like, hey, but a guy like literally on ESPN, they used to celebrate the, was it that old at late 80s Eagles and Cowboys game? It was called Bounty Gate. And like, you know what I'm saying? It was a bounty ball. It's like, so you can't sit here on one end and one of your business partners is promoting this. And then you're doing it for a couple extra bucks for guys and it happens. But they got caught up in the wave of the concussions, and it's just like, hey, we got to clean this up. And my, you know, so the, the, the culture shifted. They took, you know, I don't think he should have been out a whole season, but you know, they, they, you know, they choose when they want to do certain type of punishments because when you have people actually spying and cheating on people with video footage, you destroy that. You destroy that, and you just, you just move away. So now Peyton and Peyton had Peyton and, and Saints has every right to be pissed off about that. I, I no, never agree with that. Yeah, that, right that, that was a brutal, that was a brutal game. Suspension. though. I mean, they were literally <laughs> picking up Favre, and like I never saw even going back to the seventies. I can't remember quarterbacks getting that abused, but they were literally picking up Favre and body slamming him. I mean, today in today, I mean, I know it's like you know it's like fifteen years ago. Today, those guys would have been ejected from the game for for those kind of uh, uh, for those kind of hits. I mean, if I was watching the game and I was blown away by the by the physicality of, of what, what was going on. So I thought it was even strange for that day, considering um, you know, the, uh, the the punishment. So, I mean, everybody had to have uh, seen that. So I don't I don't know if his hands are necessarily totally clean, uh, uh, clean from that. I want to uh, I'm looking at this comment that Alex made about Drew Brees was not considered a great quarterback. I mean. You can, you can it's like he would not have been a Hall of Fame on other teams. You can literally say that by ninety eight percent of the quarterbacks that come into the league. <laughs> it's always about it's. Yeah, I mean, Tom Brady. Yeah, he went to another system. And he won a Super Bowl. That's why he was Tom Brady. He's a damn near class by himself, you know. But even the great quarterbacks, they had their majority of their. Success came in one team. You move Patrick Mahomes and move him to another squad, you may not get the same Mahomes. It's a, it's a whole system. It's the offense, the coach, and all that. So a lot of times, where a QB gets drafted, obviously Drew Brees was not a fit in San Diego. Yeah, they consider him replace, you know, expendable because of his injury and whatnot. He it worked like magic once he got down to New Orleans. So yeah, you can really say that literally about ninety eight percent of QBs that come in the league is really where they get drafted from. It's just like it, if you go in today's NFL, quarterbacks like Sam Darnold, um, who's the kid right now, uh, Zach Wilson, those mm -hmm. QBs who are already kind of, a, I don't want to say a project, but they, they get drafted to these bad organizations. Hey, I hope that don't happen to Justin Fields. But they get they get drafted by these bad organizations who do a poor job developing quarterbacks. It stains them. Now yeah. they, they they damage goods. They just you know hopefully they can go somewhere 
and resurrect their career in some way. But a lot of times, once they get stained by the initial draft team, uh, it's hard to bring them back. But the ones yeah. who land on the squad, uh, I well, I, I use uh, Trevor Lawrence when he originally was drafted by yeah. the Jaguars, but Urban Meyer, oh, they, they rinsed that out so quick. They rinsed that off so quick that they got a new head coach. So basically yeah. his second year, you know, because that first one was just, you know, you might as well, you might as well consider his, his, his second season as a rookie. Yeah, season. throw that out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah you got to throw, throw that out. And, and let me, I want to take a point on what you back door and what you were saying. There's a lot of people that believe even some of the greats like a Joe Montana, you know, he needed to be placed in the right system. And I'll put for further context because it's more recent. Hey, man, how many of those Super Bowls that Brady won, was it because of him or was it because of the system and everything that was set in place? Until the back half of those rings, was that on Brady? Because you got to remember, um, he he won the first ones, and it was just like, yeah, I mean, it was one of those where he got the Super Bowl MVP. But like the, the, a Super Bowl MVP is not equivalent to an NBA Finals MVP. Whereas, like, you can clearly tell the fingerprints that you put on this game. You can tell, hey, those six that Jordan got, he was that guy, yeah. you know. Very rarely do you get those questionable ones, like Andre Iguodala. And I, I, I could go on that about that. That one always bothered me because I was like, I, I didn't really see it from watching that one. But like, yeah, he. Everybody needs help and needs everything to go right. Uh, Breeze got in the right situation, and, and if you want to be honest about it, uh, it looks. Like, I mean, not that Philip Rivers was bad, but it just always looks bad that they got rid of you and the guy they got rid of went to a really great situation and won a Super Bowl. And and it, you know. And so it's like, hey, those things happen. Some and there's a lot of luck in winning championships and, and just everything fit. Because what does it say? About 98 percent of players need the right system. Only that small percentage can just win and go anywhere. Right. I, I use uh Michael Vick. Everybody, you know, Michael Vick made his name when he was the Falcons. But one thing Vick was not doing when he was with the Falcons, Vick was not really studying film. Went in that playbook. Yeah, he was in the playbook. Then he had, you know, had to take his, you know, time off for the dog thing. But once he came yeah. back with the Eagles, it was that situation that you also you saw seeing like a different Vic. And I say it was magic because you say McNabb was very responsible for that. And he's not even head coach. And of course, Andy Reid was. But he said McNabb was huge in getting him more in the book and whatnot. So just think of if Vic had that type of influence in Atlanta. Well, he had somebody to, you know, make him, instead of just depending on his athleticism, he was in a totally different mix. So, yes. The Sean, you mean too hard. Out the quarterback. Huh? What's that? It's too, hard, it's too hard in Atlanta to be all that. It's too hard to be studying. You in fucking big hey. city. What you talking about? Hey. And, not to, and not to mention the era in which he was, the era in which he was there and the people outside of football that was in Atlanta at that time and the, and the, and the things much. that was going on. That was a lot of hey. Say professional uh, uh, professional sports players be saying saying the same thing about Houston. Some of them they they come, they come down here and they yeah, I don't and James, the Harden, James Harden used it <laughs> I guess as his advantage. You know they were in the strip club all the time, but yeah, I mean Deshaun Watson was playing very good until all the hell broke loose with him. So, this but yeah, it, the system is pretty much. 95% of a court determines a quarterback's but, success. But let me ask y'all this. Let, let, <laughs> maybe it is, maybe I'm, I'm looking at it as a coach. <clears throat> if you draft a quarterback number one, that's your first pick in the first round, whatever whatever pick you got, do you think that it's more feasible for you to nurture your quarterback? It's a rookie that's coming in to be a starter, or you just wing that shit, just leave him to his own demise? Because I see the difference. <laughs> between mm-hmm. black quarterbacks and white quarterbacks. You can see the difference. Some of these dudes are not as good as some of these black quarterbacks, but they get to stay in the league. Every black quarterback is not a starter coming into the league, but they put into these positions with really, it's either, you know, make a break. Some of these quarterbacks, Daniel Jones, shouldn't have, to me, shouldn't have never got that fucking money. Mm. No, they could have traded for Wesson Wilson. No. Now they're ready to get rid of He turned them down. That, that's the other thing. He, tur- he turned the Giants down twice, which is crazy. He turned them down in the initial trade. But-, <laughs> but, but 
but it's it's just you know it's just funny how I see that you know we expect the quarterback to win the Super Bowl in year two. It's like man, why well, he ain't, he's weak? He ain't no good. Man, look at the system. Look at the yeah, system. They, I, you got to nurture think, the quarterback. They not they not nurturing him. And then I want to say as early back as trying to think of it, <clears throat> Carson Palmer. I'll go back to there when he was drafted. Guys were still drafted to sit. You were not just going to sit there right. and just be like, hey. We're going to play this guy right off the bat. It wasn't until these times did you do it. And even in some of those situations, those guys were thrust in that situation. And I think what it goes back to, uh, Trey Ferg, is this. If you want a quarterback to be successful, you got to give them the tools to be successful. And I'll tell you what, a quarterback that has a, a, a situation to be successful, we were just lauding all the different things the Bears had done. And we were like, hey, what if they give Justin Fields that? Now they're going to give that to Caleb Williams. They're going to give him. DJ Moore, who's the true number one. They're going to give him Keenan Allen, which is a 1D, you know, a level player. A young tight end and Cole commit. Like you said, they still got that, was it the ninth pick to get the offensive line right? They've right. added, they added the safety. You know, they re signed their corner. They have Montez Sweat on the defensive side of the football. So you got to give the, you got to give them the assets to do it. So now if, if he has a decent year, but they don't win enough, you go get a new offensive head coach and you give him that. Now, I, I would, you know, that's that's likely what happened because I will say his job is probably still on the line. I wouldn't do it, but his job just might be on the line. But it's one of those deals you got to give a guy what he needs. Look at um, on the flip side of it. Look at what Bryce Young didn't get. They traded away, which was the dumbest thing. You traded away more. You kept Burns. You lost them both. Uh, you know, you, you got minimal. You got some picks for it. But now Bryce Bryce was throwing Adam Thielen, who's past his prime. You know, you know, the, I mean, if you sign Miles Sanders for him, you just he didn't have enough weapons to make it work. Now he's got a he's got a few, but it's just like now you've already had that that stain of that first year of him just getting beat up. And you got you, what you don't want to do is the poster board for that. You don't want you don't want David Carr. You don't want a David Carr, your quarterback. Uh, sorry, son. I know it's you know that's a rough <laughs> one. That's a rough one because that was like he had the ability. And they just they just let him get just. I, I think when David Carr when he left the Texans to go to the Giants, yeah, the Giants. I think it's one, think it's one of the first times you actually seen a, a starting quarterback feel so comfortable being a backup. <laughs> he was just he said, "I'm chilling now, man. I'm just." I think he won a ring when he went there too. He won a ring with the Giants. You know, they call him the Super Bowl champion, David Carr. I'm like he didn't do nothing but hold the Super Bowl. <laughs> but he looked comfortable because yeah, man, he just. And you saw what? Uh, what's his name? Andrew Luck. I mean, yeah, I saw coming in. The, saw coming in the chat. Hey, Alexander, you said that Fields be traded again. He's eager to start. I don't believe that because I think the Wilson trade, the Wilson trade already happened before he got traded. Like he was there a few weeks for him to voluntarily go there. I think it's more so of a he wants to go to the right situation. I don't see him eager to start. Eager to start would be uh, Kenny Pickett, who's eager to start, and then you still he was still a backup behind Hurts. And it's like sometimes these guys overplay their hand and they think just because I'm a quarterback and I want to say Dominique Foxworth says this all the time because he worked at NFLPA. He's like quarterbacks, sometimes they act like they're not still football players and that they're not, they're, they're above it. And then every now and again, the owners will remind them, no, you're still in a football player. Get in line like the rest of the 53. And well, I, I think, think that's what happened with him in this situation. Well, I think with Pickett, and correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Bennett, when uh, he was originally – when they originally brought, uh, told him about them seeking out Wilson, he was saying he was cool with it. And then after the Wilson trade happened, all of a sudden he went a complete 180. And he was just I, like, I, I, I didn't, I didn't hear that uh, necessarily. I, I, I forgot mean, where I read into, that at. Yeah, I mean, going into the off season, there was clear saying he was going to be number one. The, the the thought process is they were going to try to re-sign Mason Rudolph and possibly get a bet in. I think as soon as the Russell Wilson. Um, uh, talk got serious, and I think it all changed at that point. But they was he was already exhibiting even towards the end of the last season. There was some controversy about when he was uh, out because of the injury, and but they decided to go with the hot hand of Mason Rudolph. He didn't want to be the backup to Rudolph in an upcoming game, even though he was cleared healthy to play. So there were already some issues already kind of coming out, but I think they tried to squash it. But once the the Russell Wilson talk got serious, I think you know he was already sending overtures that he would rather be in a different place. So I don't I don't think he would have been comfortable uh with with uh, being a backup in that situation 
Yeah, they shipped him out there and picked up, I think, a better quarterback. Yeah, like I said, and, and like I said, they got they got they they moved up thirty two um thirty two spots. Uh I'm sorry, twenty two spots in, in that they went from uh, third round pick one twenty to ninety eight. So, you know, so they definitely Im- improved their stock uh, you know, significantly. So want to uh switch gears a little bit. Actually, hell, switch sports. I know we were talking about football. Mm-hmm. Want to switch it to basketball. I'm over here watching this uh, March Madness game. We'll get to that one. Right. But one uh, debate I was hearing over the past week or, or so. So currently, you have LeBron James and Steph Curry as basically the face or the faces of the NBA currently. You know, before LeBron James, it was, I guess you could say Kobe. Kobe was um, the face. Well, well, really, before before LeBron James, majority of the faces, Kobe, Jordan, all of them, they was basically known for what they did on the court. They didn't really mm-hmm. do. They didn't really talk to them outside of commercials. They would, you know, they'd be starring there from time to time. You didn't really hear their opinions on other stuff. You know, it was right. just basically basketball. Right. Then when LeBron came, it it, it didn't change because of the climate we live in now. LeBron is literally, you know, face of the NBA in basketball, but then he also like he he he's damn near a shield because of social action stuff. So especially the people who think on the you know on the other side, uh, any other player can do something, they'll ignore them. Let LeBron make yeah. a comment. All yeah. of them will start throwing darts at LeBron, mm-hmm. and they do the same with Steph. So now because of that. I believe now the face is because this this society, basically this country now has, has been so divided. It's no longer you just be a face about at, at basketball. Like if you yeah. try, to, if you want to keep up with the face like you did with the previous players. The face is basically going to be now a face of the game and a face of you know that the the shield. You're gonna be a lot of players don't have him. that. Yeah. yeah, a lot of players don't want that. They don't want. You know, they, I'm just a basketball player. Mm-hmm. But when I when it comes to off the mm-hmm. field topics, and sometimes they'll be looking for you to make a comment, and we're like, yeah. and it's usually the other players who will talk, but they're not really. They not. They not on their level. They may be a role player, but they they don't mind speaking out. But again, they won't get the attention like LeBron or Steph do because they'll they such out front with it. So I'll try to see who will be look, the face after them two. Right now, the NBA is going to be in the gray area once LeBron and KD so and too. Steph, all them start. No. You know, I mean, it's, you know it's, who the it's face some, is. Wait a minute. There's some young, good players as far as basketball. Hold on. There's some young, good players as far as basketball. But the representation, and this is where I think you can see the difference in – the, I guess the maturity of players because a lot of players don't really give a damn about what's going on within the communities. They come, they do camps or whatever, but the message still has to be be better, do better, protect yourself. You know what I'm saying? And you, like the, like he said, during that time, shut up and play. A lot of players have understood I'm going to shut up and I'm going to play. Now, that's the difference once you get out of the league and stuff. You're not relying on that NBA money. But the NBA will lock you out. Mm. You say the that's wrong thing at the wrong time, they will lock you out. Right. Players understand that. And right. I can understand that position that they're in. You know, and, you know, we ain't making NBA money. So we can even say, man, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that shit. Shit. And that's 60 million looking at you. You'd be like, look, mama, what do you your mama and them looking at you, your grandma and them like, nigga, if you don't take this little money, shut your ass up. I told you about talking back anyway. <laughs> but that's the difference of, you know, lifestyles. You know, LeBron James, you can see that he had some character upbringing. He wasn't just a wild out, like going with the flow type of guy. He's been married for the majority of his career. You ain't really heard nothing until they saw the little white girl feeling all his muscles. That's what they do to us when they close. They want to touch that shit. That first time, oh, LeBron feels strong. Okay, we're making a big deal of it. But mm. Morant, I think he could have been that guy. But you see, that fizzled quick. 
Right. And with yeah. a lot of those guys, they behavior off the court is what's going to keep them from being the face. NBA ain't going to make no wild ass dude the face of the NBA. Now, what I can see is, and you've seen it over the last four or five years, the NBA will have a foreigner in the face of the NBA. Joker, Luca. Well, I see Alex, he mentioned that in the comments too. But think about it, they don't want it. Joker don't want yeah. to be no fan. Joker, now, he Joker, Joker doesn't want to be. He, he loves because they're gonna play for their national team. They gonna play. They yeah. gonna don't want to be. They, 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 they kind of they kind of want to go along and get along. And I'll say this: there's gonna be there's gonna be guys like guys that are are he's not a big enough star, but Jalen Brown is a guy that he's he's high, he's I want to say he's high level Jaylen in Brown. the NBA PA. I mean, not I'm talking about Jalen Brown from the uh, from the Celtics. He's he's vocal Jaylen about Brown. social issues. But he's not, like I said, he's not somebody that's at the star level to yeah. be there. Jason Tatum is at the level of ability of a player to be the face, but he's boring. He's boring. He's not. He's not he's sellable boring. enough. He's supposed to be boring. <laughs> no, no, but you know, you supposed to, you supposed to have some type of personality. Somebody, I will say that I was watching last night that he has the potential to be the face of the league, and as an American-born player, is Anthony Edwards. He just had that monster dunk that he came and did. And my thing is, from his game, yeah, he's new school where he does shoot the threes, but he's trying to get to the cup. He's trying to put you under the rim. He he is he's the guy that's trying to attack. And I think a guy like that, the only problem he has now, not really a problem because he plays in Minnesota, and we kind of don't we don't do things like we used to do, where it's like you got to be in the big markets because Kevin Durant had as many advertisements as anybody in Oklahoma City. But I would say if he did go to a bigger market, that would help him. But his he, play on the field, his play on the court really could put him in that guy. You know, he could it could put him in his spot. But it's more than just that. Is they looking at character now? The NBA is different yeah. than it was no, before. No, you, no, they look so, at that for sure. Yeah, because the so player who was on the rise to be that, yeah. well, as far as basketball, is, yeah. nah, it was uh, John Morant before all that stuff happened. His play yeah, on the court was, was getting the attention. Yeah. But again. Yeah. That's like I am the before him. That's like the past. It just faces of the league was basically done from their performance on the court. Since yeah. LeBron and Steph, you can't say that anymore. Yeah. Now the face yeah. of the league is like I said, it's a shield. Yeah. Like they they gonna be looking at you though because it's everything is so outspoken now. And you gotta have opinions about certain stuff. And like I say, I can. I think Steph they gonna feel that LeBron said. Well, it depends. I'm, I don't know if the NBA I, I, controls that. That's, that's like yeah. the general public. Yeah. If, you, if, yeah. if, a, if something happened, they're going to look for you to make a comment. Yeah, and I mean, the press is definitely going to drive it. what yeah. you say, yeah. you're going to have all type. You, uh, I don't know if y'all seen that movie 300 when mm. they was in there and they shot all them arrows at them. They had to. Yeah. You're going to be looking like that. You have to put the shield up and just block all the They're gonna what they yeah. We're gonna block out the uh, the sun. You block out the sun, yeah. Because they go. That's how they are. Uh, that's how, that's the, how they today's are. NBA is. Yeah, and, I and, think and one more thing. That's yeah. how the NBA uh, and uh, I see KP just made a comment about the NBA is too, uh, too liberal. Yes, they want they want to, be, to. They, they want to they want to speak more. So when you speak more. You gonna get a lot yeah. of attention. From and but the else. thing is, that, but they haven't suffered. They haven't suffered any for their liberal view. I mean, it's still the you know, as far as growth of the sport and fandom and whatnot, it's still very much up there. So they haven't, with all the stuff that's taken place since George Floyd and all that, they haven't the taken China any, situation. They have recovered from that China situation. If that was yeah. it was looking real. Yeah, ugly. yeah, and that that was again totally you know se separate from the game. But I will say this about you know certainly LeBron. I mean, I think the league is certainly going to um, miss LeBron. You haven't seen or heard an athlete really. You talk about going back to the sixties. When you had that core where you had Muhammad Ali, mm -hmm. Jim Brown, and Bill Russell, and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, when you had those guys, that was the last time where you really had athletes that were really advocates in sports. There was a dead spot for so many le uh, years. In fact, there was a famous book that came out. William uh, Rhodes came out with the $40 million, 40 million slave. That's right. And really, LeBron was like really the first one. And I don't think he was necessarily, he wasn't even, um, I think he was more almost thrust into it more so than anything. Because again, it was when the young brother got uh, uh, deleted in Florida. Uh, like Brian, that yeah. Is, yeah, that so was the doing, like, uh, first time. Like it was so, because a lot I of mean, guys, like, yeah, Jordan took a pass. Jordan was like Republicans by sneakers. Was, and, and so, so. And even, and, and I'll guys, say this, even LeBron. Passed that buck. 
And it was LeBron who, you know, really gave, you know, voice to have athletes now to be able to speak up about things. The thing that I'm seeing now that's um, uh, guys are speaking out, but they're not necessarily speaking out for, um, you know, uh, uh, you know for general causes. Like you hear guys yeah. talking, you know, like Kyrie Irving, he'll speak, but it's more like on conspiracy theory. The earth is flat. And, and, and you know, certainly See, you know, and the documentary that was out and all. I'm saying so guys – I think for a minute they got vocal about, you know, just what they, you know, what they believed. But, you know, as far as being there for, you know, significant issues, I, it's still mostly been LeBron and, and Steph and maybe a handful of guys in the league. And to your earlier point, I mean, yeah, you had guys like, I remember the guy Craig Hodges who played for the Bulls. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Those Georgia teams. He was vocal, but he was Craig Hodges. He was coming off the bench. Basically. Like, real quick, let's let, let you go, Dante. Yeah, George I mean, Hill was the one who – Gay, you know, when the Bucks uh sat out that that during that time in the bubble, yeah, mm-hmm. George Hill started that, but you didn't mm-hmm. hear nothing about George Hill because he's yeah. not on their level, so yeah, yeah. But, so I'm saying we're gonna George have Hill ain't in the league no more, he's really when they're gone. And no. I, don't, I don't know if you're gonna get another voice because you're talking about it was like so basically it's 50 years between Bill Russell and LeBron James. And I and I and I, you know, who knows how long it's going to be before you get a guy who's going to be out there that vocal, but again, vocal for the right reasons, not for the wrong stuff, not for some Instagram. Yeah. So, I mean, who's the player now who's getting run because he's dating that older woman, wait to care. had a baby with an older uh, green, yeah. So, I mean, you're hearing more stuff like that now from <laughs> players than anything that's like substantive, you know. So, so again, the point that again, LeBron, at least his image anyway, married his high school sweetheart, got his sons. You know, on he, again, he checks off. He's almost like Derek Jeter. I mean, in terms of being able to check off all yeah. those boxes and be like, you know, you really don't hear any major uh, 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 scandals with him like that. And uh, so, again, those players are not a dime a dozen. And I think, you know, having the one, I don't think you've had enough to kind of, you know, spur that, just, okay, there's going to be a movement from now on that players are going to be more, you know, as a collective speaking out uh, when it comes to certain things or un- unless something ma- major, something urgent hits the fan like it did um uh, with I the think voice situation, be LeBron years. and Steph will be talking. It's yeah, and I, I'll say this: it's it's been a it's been a process for them, and then with LeBron being basically on the platform his entire career since his junior year in high school, kind of being on the national scene. But even LeBron has had missteps where it was like the Tamir Rice situation happened in Cleveland, and yeah. he was kind of like a he was kind of jammed up. He's like, I got to get more information about it, and it's kind of like that. I think they're trying to get into the usher of. They, the league wants to get a handle on it and the handlers, and then they kind of come out with the thing like when they heat, they all wore the, you know, they all wore the, the, the hoodies in the picture. And then, like, Mike Miller, you know, was the only white people on the team, you know, was not pictured because he was like, yeah, it's not a good look. We're going to, you know, and it's kind of more orchestrated. I think they're moving towards that. I want to say they everybody had the I Can't Breathe shirts, but like they say, when it came to All Star weekend, they was like, that was kind of, that was kind of done. And it's kind of like, it's a, it's a fight for the league because you want more ratings. But the only way, you know, sometimes they think the way to get more ratings is to be completely neutral. And I, so the way some people have said it, I was just like, I understand what y'all are saying, but you have a league where one player can control so much. And so when you have that, you have a player's union that's controlled by the bigger plays, the star players. So if they want to speak on something, they're going to, even if it's at the detriment to make some of the fans uncomfortable. And they're just like, hey, I want to escape. So I think that it's, it's on the league to see which path you want to go. You don't want to silence guys, but then some people were really turned off by the bubble with the Black Lives Matter on the back of the jerseys. Right. For me, hey, look, I don't give a damn if they was offended. Right. You know, that's my it was like, it was up, Yeah, but it was like a bunch of stuff happening, like all between yeah. that, between the um, – I'm sorry, who's the brother who was uh, deleted in Florida, the young um, – um, Tray- Trayvon, Trayvon, Trayvon Martin. Trayvon Martin. The then the you also had the, the Clippers yeah, owner. The hoodie. Right. Oh, on. A couple of years ago. So it Curry. was like it was like just a bunch of circumstances that just kind of happened within a short period of time where guys I think felt them. You had to you had to say something. You yeah. had to but, you, you, but if you, you look at, could not say anything. So look at the last 20 years in the NBA. Well, who's the one player that most of these players admired early in big life? LeBron James. A lot of these players in the league now were kids when LeBron James got into the league. Yeah. And they were, and he's impacted the league in that capacity for the younger generation. That's old heads. We all know who the man was, Michael Jordan. 
he had these white boys and these old heads jumping up out of their sheets, sleep screaming like women when he was in this prime. And he was that man because he, he, you, he, it was, it's like outside of basketball, you could see the fight in the comp competitive nature in Michael Jordan. You know, they was talking about him owing fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000. Michael Jordan, shit, he was making four or $500 million dollars at the time. What are you going to bet you? $5, $20? He's betting 10, 20 racks. Uh, uh, you know what I'm saying? That's pocket change to him. But as far as his statue, Michael Jordan understand that if he wants to continue that dynamic, he's not going to step in any political realm mm. at all. He's going to stay away from any conscious uh, fallout in the community. Yeah, yeah but I mean, because when's the last time you saw, again, you yeah. had a, a athletes endorse like a candidate? Like they stumped 2016. They, you know, stumped for, you know, Hillary Clinton. I mean, LeBron got out yeah. there on the state, you know, so – Again, th those kind of things, I don't know if you're going to see as many guys doing that. But, again, they, that goes back to, uh, again, the 60s. Rosie Greer, you know, got on the RFK uh, 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 mm -hmm. campaign. I mean, so, so again, that kind of – I think guys are definitely going to be a bit more cautious going forward. But, again, you're, not, you're just not going to have too many guys who are going to be that uh, bold. I think we're going to go into another dark area, uh, period where guys are just going to, you know, uh, work more behind the scenes. You know, they'll support you on the side or whatever, but they're not going to be all out in front with it because it just, you know. It just becomes too much, especially with social media, it becomes too much of a distraction. Yeah. yeah. They'll uh, uh, be done attacked you and said you was a fucking alcoholic and you did all this crazy stuff before you get home. <laughs> so, like I say now, man, the, being the face of the league now is it, is so much like, like I mean, say, we haven't seen a player you know take the stances like they do today since what they call it, the Cleveland Four? Since those dudes. Mm -hmm. You know, so Hey, all the players that came and that, that Cleveland Ford, that's what he was saying, Jim Brown, uh, Bill Russell. Muhammad uh, Ali, Kurt Muhammad Flood, Ali. you know, yeah. It was and the thing about it, uh, and uh, what's the name? They invited, uh, they invited O.J. Simpson to come back because O.J. Simpson at that time was <laughs> hot in yeah. uh, USC. Yeah. They, he declined, man. He, yeah. The rest is his. But it's interesting because years later, you had, I think, Jim Brown. Uh, he was on Arsenio Hall show, the, 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 I guess the mm -hmm. reboot of the show. And he had said, look, you know, if I was going to have another session like we did back in 67, we got those guys together, I wouldn't invite Kobe. So that, that was like a, so that was like yeah. a big slap to face to Kobe and whatnot because, you know, he, he didn't think that Kobe was necessarily sort of with it, so to no. speak. So it would have been interesting. He was, and he was, he was certainly following in the footsteps of just kind of going in and like yeah. all the athletes after Jordan, they learned from him. It was just yeah. like, nah, I didn't, as much as he's emulated the game, emulated it off the court as well. Yeah. So it was just like, nah, he was, he had every right to say that, you know, you know, he did. So and I respect, I, see, I, uh, I respect Jim on him. I see Bobby, he, he, he had a comment, uh, why are we looking for athletes to be and entertainers to be outspoken for social issues? It's not the fact we're looking for, well, shouldn't. it's just the reality of today. In the past, faces, and I'm just because it's, it's a little bit different in NFL and, and football and baseball, but in basketball, in the past, majority of the faces, and that's basically Kobe Bryant, Michael Jordan, uh, Dr. J, well, Bird and Magic, they were the faces of the league, but they was it was basically strictly on their own court play. Mm -hmm. They became famous, and the league was just marketing them because of their own court play. When Le it, it changed during LeBron's career and Steph's career, when it was no longer about on court play, it's because the society we in now and a lot of stuff just happened to happen. You know, d during their playing career, they when things happened, they spoke out about it, and ever since then, they get a lot of arrows uh, shot at them, especially for people on the other side. So now it's like to the point where you can tell it's not like I don't even think NBA fans the face of the league is somebody who is in front and whenever they speak or something they get attention from everybody basketball community outside the basketball community and right now it's only two players that do that do that right now that's Steph and LeBron like. Like I said, we were talking about George Hill was the one who started that uh, Milwaukee Bucks and the NBA right. ultimately sitting out those games in a bubble. 
Um, Craig Hodges, uh, y'all, y'all brought him up. They weren't, I guess, they weren't the guys. They weren't yes, the guys at they, the time. Now, nobody Bobby, discredited what they point. did. Nobody discredited what they did, but as far as the outside opinion, they wasn't getting that. Hell, Mahmoud Abdul Raouf, when he was just praying to himself when he converted to, you know, wanted to keep as a uh, Muslim, and he got exiled the league, he just disappeared, but nobody yeah. was saying nothing about him. And he wasn't really doing it to get no attention. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, it's just, it, it just comes in the, it just comes with the territory now, unfortunately, because no longer about the game, because if anybody else speak, nobody will listen. Mm-hmm. But as soon as LeBron and, and, and Steph, now they, get, they got to the point, it was as soon as they speak on anything not basketball related, they gonna get all type of attention from everybody. Right. So that's the, that's what a face is. Now that it, it converted over to that, because a face is basically somebody, and both LeBron, <clears throat> and I think Steph is probably approaching it. Because me, I got this scale. There's star, <clears throat> mm-hmm. and there's superstars, and then there's icons. Yeah. LeBron, MJ, Kobe. <clears throat> I'm over here talking. They icons. Steph. Yeah. Yeah, because even the way he does it, he's he's definitely a little bit more. You know, he's more quiet. He's not a he's not the most vocal person or likes necessarily to be interviewed. So it's it's so it's a difference. It's also your presence. I think that's one of the reasons. Again, I agree. I don't think we're necessarily looking for that, but you certainly appreciate it when it happens. I think that's a reason why Ali, for example, has been so revered over the over the decades and years. Even guys who never even saw him. But if you just watch, go YouTube and just watch Ali and just the things he would talk about, you didn't necessarily agree with everything that he said. But just for an athlete to be so bold and so good at the same time, it was like any like, uh, could you imagine Ali with social media today? <laughs> I mean, what that would, what Yo. that would, what that would look like? I mean, it would be. be you know, I don't. Yeah. So 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 again, uh, it's rare, but I think that's one of the reasons why this, uh, some of these guys are revered. Be again beyond the sport of uh, beyond the sports uh, that they are uh, participated in, and and I think another thing is about the game being my last point on it. The game being more international, they have made Victor Wembanyama to be the face of the NBA. And like, so I was listening to a podcast, and they were like, uh, "Did you notice who interviewed him when he got drafted? Robin Roberts. He hasn't yeah. been affiliated with ESPN NBA in a long time. Yeah, uh, that is Good Morning America." So mm-hmm. they was just like, we're going to get the host of Good Morning America to come get him. All, he's producing the numbers that are as high as or higher than the Le- total for LeBron. So he's going to win the rookie of the year in a landslide. They're putting him up there for defensive player of the year, but I know how the NBA works. They're not going to let the rookie get that. They're going to probably give it to um, one of the other contenders on the list just because as far as impactful for defense, you should at least – be winning games. That's not his fault that they're that bad, but you know. But I, but I think that's going to be the international side of the mm-hmm. face of the league. They're going to get him to talk and make sure the English is on point. But you know, but the other problem is the Lucas, the Jokic's, as far as them being the faces in the international part, they're at home in the summertime. The American ball players are here. You know, they might travel, but they're here. They're at the another big thing of it is who's going to be the guy that when they show up. At the they show up at the uh, at the pro am game at the what's the one in California, the real pop I forgot I forgot the name of it off the top of my head, but because they don't really the workers not like that anymore. But they go uh, to the pro ams inside. The, you talking about the Drew League? Drew League, Drew League. Yeah. That is when they show up to the Drew League. Who's all gonna pack into the gym? When LeBron does it, like he said, face of the league. They're like it's a mob. It's a cool yeah. mob. Like back in the day when Kobe went to Rucker. <laughs> it was like a, you might as well the president might have been coming through there. Victor so go who, who's the guy that's going to do that? Victor go do that same thing. He's a phenom. Crazy. Victor go do the same thing. He's seven foot man. He, listen, when they put that weight on him, put them 15, 20 pounds on him, he gonna be unstoppable because he still can shoot the ball. His defense is gonna be great. Amazing. And. Shit, what else? What he gonna average double figures in rebound? He gonna get you. Uh, and San Antonio ain't gonna always be at the bottom like they are. Nah, they, they with a be. player like that, with a player like that, and their player development uh, with their guys, they're gonna, they're you're gonna look up, and in three years, they're gonna be either at the play in or making the playoffs, and they'll be back in the rotation for national games because 
I want to see him. Like it's be better. What do you say? As soon as Pop retires, they'll be better. You, I, I think Pop ain't got too much time. Though. I, I don't You're think better. he does. Pop just want to stay on that sideline. I'm surprised he's still coaching. I know, you know, after his wife passed away, that I guess that's his main. Yeah, he's only thing to keep him gone. He gonna uh, walk away when I he guess wants something to. Something similar to some Monty Williams up there in Detroit. I, I, I don't know how they could do it, but if they, if they, if they keep some action. <laughs> For that $3 million, you'll do it. <laughs> hey, man, Pop, he, he probably, man, he can retire from San Antonio. Yeah, he, he can probably retire. Still get paycheck. Hey, he he probably can be able to walk away. San Antonio, you know, for free. His uh, job is never in jeopardy. Nah, he can go, he yeah. can win five yeah, games. He's a, he's a president as games. well. I yeah, he's, a, he's, he's in the front office, and he has a, he signed an extension, but the extension – wasn't just for coaching, it's for when he phases into the front office part. I say he gives I see he gives Victor at least one more year, probably two, because he probably wants to get a little bit of taste of being in the postseason again, you know, and then with the wins, more accolades, you know, all that kind of stuff. But I am ready to see them transition to see what they do with somebody else coaching. Pop on that Pat Riley uh route. He basically yep. following Pat Riley. That's basically yep. what he's doing. Exactly. Let me see yeah. how uh, what we got. What we got next? We got another topic. We have we another Mar- one. Marsh Madness well, coming up. The topic out. So, and it looks like we're getting short. On, yeah, we got March Madness. My only thing about March Madness because it's today is only you know it's still you know, the first four. Right. Yeah, and I was just watching this Grambling and Grambling pulled it off and over. Shout out to Grambling. So shout out to the years, baby. Amen. Now, the game yesterday, I missed because I was doing something. I missed the uh, Hampton versus – I forgot who they was playing. But that um, Colorado State, Virginia. New was that Man. Virginia, yeah. and they've been like this for a while. They are a boring team to watch because they right. – Yeah. They, they offense is always just so sluggish. Yeah. And then, and then also they got – they finished the half, the first half with, what, 14 points? Yeah, yeah 14. And I was like, man, y'all. Yeah, it was the newser. I mean, w- one question I did have about again, I'll be honest, I haven't followed um, a lot, especially with the foot. Now it's weird. Now with the football season being so spread out, just given with the trades and everything, I mean, that's to me that's been much more exciting about the trade moves going on than the than the basketball games themselves. Well, that's how football did it. That's how that's exactly yeah, yeah. How it so did. it's like it's definitely like I never had a, I really never had a football off season because I just kept rolling in and you know, especially they with the moves that the been making. Year. I haven't been as locked in on the college basketball as I um, as I did. Now I know every year there's always there's always someone who gets you know uh, uh, gets uh, gets hosed. You know what I mean? I mean th- this year and shout out and again it's interesting because I'm a you know me and Troy for we go back to the '80s so we're like you know Big East basketball. Yeah, Georgetown, St. John, Syracuse, Pittsburgh, Providence. And all these Big East teams got snubbed. Pittsburgh got snubbed, even though they had an API ranking of 40. Yeah, in St. John's, they had a ranking of 32 on the, on, on the API. Providence got hosed. So you got those guys sitting out, but then you got, got uh, teams like Virginia that are getting in. And so the question I'm having is I know now they're using a lot of metrics, a lot of – they got like something like 31 to 32 different data points that they're using in the, in the decision-making process. But at the end of the day, you still got 10 guys in the room who are making a call in terms of who gets in, who gets in and who gets out. So my question is, is it time maybe at this point, since it's not going anywhere, is it now time that maybe we should start using something like AI to start making these decisions about who gets in and who gets out? So you put all that criteria in, they spitting it out, but it's still someone says, I know what the number saying. I know, St. John's is a 32 ranked on the API uh, 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 going in. And I know they got all these quad one wins and all this kind of stuff, but I'm still going with this team. If you want to eliminate that, then do we need to go to some sort of AI to make the decision that, um, <laughs> that uh, uh, you know, that takes it out of hand of these guys? And you just don't know what the agendas are, but it just seems, um, you know, kind of species. But it, and it happens every year. Like, like I said, every year, Certain amount of teams, four or five teams get snubs. I don't want to see the tournament go to 80 teams or 84 teams. That I don't want. I think the you know, the two weeks is enough. You already put the the, the playing games for the 68. 
that's more than enough. I know, you know, this isn't college football where it made sense to go from four to eight or the 12 or wherever they're going with it. But, uh, yeah, is it time that we start using some of the tech to really start making these calls and getting it out of the hands of these committees? Because you still got the you still get the sense that it's just a lot of guys in a smoke filled room just making these decisions who goes in. And it's not always necessarily for, uh, uh, for teams that are deserving of it. Well, I was just I was just looking when you were saying that it's currently 350 <laughs> Division One basketball schools. So yeah, you try and you know, it, especially with in, in basketball, when they have this, they can win their respective. That's a whole other thing to me, though. How they can win their respective conference uh, tournaments and get an automatic bid. But yeah. you can finish. You can go through the. Like I remember Prairie View uh, several years ago. They they finished the regular season one, and but they lost in the in a tournament, and you know that they made their regular season is pretty much useless. But you have all of these different respective conference tournaments going on. So I I don't really know how you can narrow down that many schools. Cause I believe it's, in college football, I think it's like 117. Mm-hmm. But in basketball, as you can see, it's damn near triple. And, you know, I think even if you put in an AI, I, I don't know how you could put in a formula or whatever the two. Well, like I said, they use, they're use they using formulas now. Like I said, there's 32, 32 or 33 data points that they're using right now to come up with these rankings. Again, based on your strength of schedule, Based on again, they have these different quadrants. Like quad one is like you know your home record against yeah. a top thirty team, your home record against a, a away record against a top seventy team. So they have all this stuff. So I'm saying you could you could rank them one to sixty eight in a in an algorithm, and that would that would I think that would take a lot of it out of it. But it's still like a lot of these guys are saying, even though I know that these rank the the, the data points are saying this team is deserving. You still have some of these guys in the room saying, no, I think this team, again, Virginia, I mean, I, I, I can't see why they even should even sniff the tournament. <laughs> but they're they in where a team like Pittsburgh's out, St. John's, you know, with that history. And, again, you know, should your, should your name mean something? I mean, St. John's, you know. It again, does. The program. And then you got Rick Pitino as, as the yeah. head coach, even though he's had some controversies. But, again, this is a – multi-time national um, championship winning coach. I mean, you know, some other criteria uh, 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 should be added here. But if these guys can't get it right in the rooms, and and then the, on top of that, what it's also doing is it's killing the NIT because a lot of these teams, they're like, we're not even playing. Because there's no, it's no yeah. benefit to a, an established program. In fact, I even heard today, that they're saying that they've been thinking about maybe the NIT should be for like solely for like mid majors, but it That's it does St. John's it doesn't do Pittsburgh or Providence you know D one programs it does them no good to play the NIT tournament. And yeah, and what if you lose? <laughs> so St. John said, "Look, we didn't even win our NIT tournament, and we're screaming that we should have been in the um, in the uh, in the in the uh, the NCAA tournament." So you're not even helped then all, uh, either. So again, if teams you're mid major, no one really has hears hears about you or whatever. You know, get a lot of these HBCU teams in there, or whatever, and just let them, you know, have at it. And it's almost like almost like a Division Two championship or Division One A championship. Let those guys go. But you know, now that you're you're devaluing the NIT anyway by a lot of these teams saying, "Look, we're not. You know, you snubbed us. We're not even going to play in the NIT." When that was almost like a given. You just wanted you guys to keep playing. But now with NIL and guys looking to go into the portal and whatnot, you know, it's not it's not an advantage. So they're going to have to change something up on the NIT anyway if they want to keep it relevant. Hmm. Yeah, I think I think they should change it. But I just think there's always and definitely when I would say, would you say in Craigburg and, and Mr. Bennett, would you say guys in the in the 80s and the 90s that it was a better college basketball product? Oh, one of were better teams. One hundred percent. Number and, one, and so, because again, guys stayed for the most part. They stayed for four years. Again, eight, yeah. in the mid eighties, you had the Hoya paranoia. You had, you know, with Patrick Ewing and those boys. You had Villanova. You had St. John's, Mark Jackson. I mean, those guys. And you look for you had rematches. That's the thing. You you look forward to yeah. the rematch. It wasn't Sir, the one and done sort of thing. Mm-hmm. And obviously, they weren't making the kind of money. I mean, NBA players back in the eighties, they were making like you know a quarter million dollars and up. That was the starting salary, so you it made sense 
for you to say, and there was no D League, there was no, you know, Euro League really wasn't a, a a major option for a lot of players. So yeah, you you got a chance to enjoy. You saw rivalries when you know, so when you saw Georgetown, St. John's, or 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 one of those, you know, or, or, yeah, Duke, or even like Duke Carolina. I mean, think about it. you had Jordan and and James Worthy and those guys going up has against Duke all those years. I mean, the, so I think college basketball because of you know. The, the, the current landscape it's just not good you got the one and done mm. and you got the nils and so you know, it's hard to have those kind of robberies where you had those matchups like that you yeah know, 90 you had done. unlb and, and, and went back to back my, yeah and, and see i remember i remember a good portion of it but basically the bulk of my watching years like one of my favorite teams was that that uh umass marcus camp team mm. and it was just like you know so you you got that and my point of that is do you think that those teams had better people that were left out of the 64 than this. I feel like this is as a watered down product. Some of this is, is crying just to, it is a standard thing where uh, I know he's got cancer, so he can't do it as much anymore. My, one of my favorite things to do was to see the bracket come out and then hear Dickie B. Oh my gosh, they robbed him. That was one of my favorite things to do. Cause sometimes I felt that team and I felt like yeah. that's just part of the game. I felt yeah. like I don't want I want AI as you as least as possible. And what you said made me think about the BCS and how many times mm -hmm. this team was clearly deserving to be in the championship yeah. game and they left them off. And it, it creates a certain amount of rage and it, it makes you kind of be like, I want to see what they're gonna do next year. The only problem is but now you're gonna some see of those teams, so many guys are gonna leave. So you're gonna see a lot more parity in the in the college games. You're gonna see it over the next yeah. four or five you, you, years. You, you are, you've already seen it because you get guys that transfer a couple of different times, and you see your teams that are winning. They have guys that are yeah. veterans that have played for years versus the guys with the one and done. Like I really feel like you have to mix, get a one and done here or there, but you need guys that have been in your program or transfer from other programs that know how to play basketball and know how to. But win. you know, listen, it's not even that. It's easy. It's all the money grab now. You get the money. That's why you can transfer. You go into the highest yeah. bidder. You a top player. You get the money. You seeing it even more prevalent in the women's game. The women will stay. Now they got a reason to stay. The guy, mm -hmm. you will. You listen. If you, if, if, it, it depends on how much money you want to make or how you want to do it. You stay in college. You get your fucking four year degree. Make sure you fucking graduate. Get your three, three, four, five hundred million, two million dollars. While you're in college, you have no student debt, you graduate, you go to the NBA, maybe you make it, maybe you don't, maybe you go to the G League, maybe you go overseas, whatever. But you can live the life that y'all talk about all the time on somebody else's dime, and with your college degree, it makes you a professional. It puts you in a different bracket. Most of these guys who you see on these uh, TV uh, uh, analysts, those guys, most of those guys are college graduates. Once they get the degree is when they take them into that next level. Yeah. That's why you say get give it a ring and send over a talk. He ain't got no college degree. He just play basketball. Right. So if you get your degree, and that's the benefit of today, it's gonna, I think it's gonna be more priority because now there's no I'm gonna stay four years. I'm gonna get five hundred thousand dollars a million. You see what they're getting out there, they're getting millions. I mean, you got your top tier teams, but shit, even one double A, you ask them to get two, three hundred thousand dollars. You'd be a fool to leave school right. unless you're just chasing money, but that shit don't run out. Well, of I, but it's interesting what you're saying, though, about you mentioned the women's game. Honestly, I don't think I've been this interested in the women's game or the rivalries in probably the last five or six years than I am now. More so, I'm looking forward to South Carolina playing, um, uh, I think the last year's champion, you know, state, uh, Staley no, in, in that rematch more so than any team that I that I can recognize in the and it's uh, criminal. They put they put Iowa and they put Iowa and LSU in the yeah, same bracket. Yeah, I was just about to say that was just that was just bad really bracket. Had a they hell of a Final Four on that women's side. Yeah, yeah, like it's I, I'm not I'm gonna lie, I'm, I'm locked in, and I will say this: that's helped the women's uh a lot when UConn was so dominant, and then there's yeah. already fewer upsets in the women's game. But yeah. it was so dominant. But I remember I was being upset when I first found out about Caitlin Clark. And I was like, oh, they got upset. And so you watching it, and it's just like like last year, that 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 championship game. And that man, I want to say that um that final four game, the first game, that was it was intense. And it's like it's some good ball, and it's just like 
I'm glad that the women's game is continuing to grow. Poppy, just, shut up, man. Great. I mean, <laughs> Poppy over there, he really, guy at day, really, guy at day, guy at day, he really talking big, man. But I know, no, we, serious, I know, but I mean, the women's game. I mean, when's the last time you saw? I mean, that brawl that happened um, a week ago. When's yeah. the last time you saw a, 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 a women's collegiate game in a brawl? I mean, it's all, it's like these women are like they playing for something now. They heat it up. They heat it. They know. The well, themselves I know. Some of them almost get them all that, that LSU uh, coach, she's a trip, man. Now, oh, oh. Be like she's gangster. Straight she, 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 she wild. Like, yeah, she it's straight up gangster. You know, sure. <laughs> they, they got so they per- and it's like they got personalities with the coaches. Yeah, they got personalities yeah, with the players. It's it's on. really it's really a moment. They and got and it's not over because they got Juju uh, Watkins over there at USC. Like. That young lady is a freshman. <laughs> it's like the women's yeah. game is in good shape, yeah. and you see, yeah, and I can't you see, wait to yeah, see both. See these, yeah. But you see these sisters starting to style out. I mean, Staley, she be coming out with designer stuff for them. Women, man, love. Really, they're not like Pat Summit back. <laughs> back the nah, they Pat so Summit. Like, 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 these coaches are glam. They 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 and, they and, they and what's crazy is we've done all this talking. We have not brought other than me saying when UConn dominated, we have not brought them up as far as. Them being asleep or anything, and they still got paid. They still got paid buckets. You yeah. know what I'm saying? They still got some some ballers over there. So like, man, yeah, man, I I'm mad. Like I I, I hate I'm gonna be in the office tomorrow because that's one of my favorite days. It's just man, just nonstop. stop. Oh, it's man. nine o'clock. It's like that first, it's another game. That first round of just <laughs> madness. I'm telling you, I'm telling. You, get the uh before we head out. Download that Capital One March Madness app. Capital One March okay. Madness. And you can see literally all, they literally have all the games. Now, you got to tie it to your current TV provider. Mm, so you got to put all, your, uh, all the games in one app. Oh, you just click on it. You just click on it. Yeah, awesome, awesome. Uh, I'm, I'm good. This was a great, this is a great, uh, this is a great show tonight, uh, you know. Uh, yeah, Jeff man, support. I... We'll see, you know, what happens in the coming <laughs> weeks. Again, next set, next month, we got the draft. So, so again, you got more stuff going. You got March Madness on the women and the men. Sorry, Poppy, I'm gonna be checking out these uh, uh, these games when when LSU's playing, when when Staley's playing. You know, uh, I'm watching these games. Sorry, I'll you know, bland chicken, oh, yeah. so be it. But you know, but I think lately that it's definitely getting spicier. They're starting to add a little uh, salt and pepper, uh, you know, to these uh, uh to these uh, to these matchups. Because again, these women got stuff to play for. They got. They possibly can make more money than they can going to the WNBA. How yeah, crazy is they, that? They do. You got all these yeah, ladies like going to Russia. You got you know get going to Russia getting locked up, and and so like, hey, look, man. I might as well stay. So I'm gonna stay in college four years. I'm gonna make that money because this might be it. Yeah, uh, Brittany Griner could have been making a killer in that. Yeah, they would have. Had oh my gosh, yeah. she wouldn't even. Have you know what I'm saying? So so yeah, She's so amazing. so I'll, I'll be I'm definitely gonna be fiending. You know, uh, boy. Now if they change the wardrobe, you know what I mean. <laughs> Man, it's been he said that I mean. We already got lingerie football out there. <laughs> but uh they gotta be lingerie, but just you know, a little tighter, you know. Because remember back in the 90s, they they followed the men. Like so men like Dawn, when Dawn Stadium played, they had the baggy when like they had that fat five look. So they had uh-huh. the, the baggy shorts all the way down to the ankles and all that kind of stuff. So you know, <laughs> they just have something just a little, you know, more more tried. I'm just saying, you know. But hey. Hey, what's on uh Lena Appreciate you. The ladies in the house. Awesome. Well, on that note, fellas, because we got to make room for the next show. But, uh, yeah, I, I enjoyed today's show. So, it's you know, already, man. Uh, I think when we meet up again next week, they should at least have the first two rounds. We should probably be at the Sweet 16. No, we're going to be at the Sweet 16. We'll be That's at the Sweet 16. Be, you know, so and then the, the official everybody else starting uh, MLB will be next Thursday because I know they had the game. When I woke up this morning for work, and I was like, hey, man, baseball was like crazy. Yeah, over, over. Yes, sir. Baseball oh, season, baby. Hey, man, it's, it, it never stops. This stopped, is baseball man. season and training season for all the guys. Get y'all ass outside and start training. Get ready for it. It's <laughs> summertime. We're ready going. We in the spring. Get ready. Lose your 20 pounds. Women, get out, work out. Men, yeah, work I'm out. That's what my lawnmower is for. Open I the damn my, windows I, in I your house. Out. Yeah, let's do it. Other than that, great show, fellas. All right, man. Great show. No, that was the point. That was the point. (laughs) We appreciate everybody in the chat. We appreciate y'all. We will catch y'all next week, man. Wonder what. Take care. Peace. Subscribe now.